Another big name investor calling out Bitcoin today by comparing the cryptocurrency to one of this country's most infamous financial frauds. Saudi Arabia's Prince Al Ali saying this to our Andrew Ross Sorkin this morning. I just don't believe in this Bitcoin thing. I, I think this is going to just implode one day. I think this is Enron in the making. Well, for more on that, let's bring in Brian Kelly. He's the founder of BK Capital Management. Brian runs a fund dedicated to Bitcoin and other digital assets. A fund, by the way, that has returned an astounding 2,000% year-to-date. Joins us on the phone. BK, welcome back. Hey, Scott. Thanks for having me back. What's your reaction to what you heard from the Prince today? Well, it, it's, it, listen, I think what it shows is just a fundamental misunderstanding of what Bitcoin is. We all get caught up on whether or not this is going to be some kind of global currency that disrupts central banks. But fundamentally, all that Bitcoin is, is a software program that removes the middleman from finance. So if I told you that I had a new company or a new app that I was able to remove a lot of the middleman from financial services, you'd be all over that. And you'd say this is the greatest thing ever. Uh, so it just he, it shows me that the prince doesn't understand what is going on. I mean, he's far, he's far from the only, um, let's call it, credible investor uh, person of stature in the financial industry who's either throwing shade directly at Bitcoin investors or at least raising serious questions about it, Jamie Dimon and others. Yeah, very true. And listen, I count myself along those ranks. I mean, back in 2013, I thought I said the same thing. I thought it was a scam. I thought it wouldn't work. I had to break through all those old concepts of what a financial system is and the idea that a financial system that we have now is built with a middleman in it. As soon as you can break through that, then you can start to understand that this is a revolutionary technology and a fundamental change in the way we send money around the world. So, you, so you're saying you, you think people are sort of conflating the the credibility, if you will, of the underlying technology with the speculative nature of the investment itself. Yeah, I, I, I think that's probably a fair thing to say. And listen, I don't know if Bitcoin is going to be the one that wins out. I'm always reminded that MySpace existed before Facebook. But there will be a token that resides on a blockchain that will allow us to send value over the Internet without a middleman. And that's a revolutionary technology, and that's something I want to be able to my, my question all along has, has been, what, what would happen if, if something as simple as the Treasury Secretary of the United States or the Fed Chair made any kind of questionable, suspect comment about Bitcoin? Forget everything else. Bitcoin would get hammered at that very moment, would it not? Yes, it ha and it has. Every t every Brian, Brian, yeah. Mount Gox, I want, I want Brian to answer. The Mount Gox hacking should have killed this thing, and it didn't. Um, when you had hundreds of millions in Bitcoin stolen off an exchange, that should have been the last you ever heard of it. It turned out that was only the beginning. So I I'd love to hear your take. What happens yeah. if tomorrow the Secretary of the Treasury says it is a felony? to exchange money in, in Bitcoin in the United States. Bitcoin loses half of its value in an instant, doesn't and, it? And then what? That's the question. I mean, I don't know. Listen, it's not, that's not good. If, you know, if my, my investors ask me what my nightmare scenario is, that's probably one of them, right? It's not good if, you, if the U.S. government comes out and says this is illegal. That being said, I don't think you can stop it. It's like saying, how do you stop the Internet? How do you stop the email? Um, so it will rebound, and what has happened every single time is that it has rebound because there's a fundamental demand for this technology. Well, so Brian, right. you don't have to come out and say it's illegal. All somebody like that has to come out and say is we are taking a, a real hard look at it at the yep. possibility of it being regulated. Yeah, well, and then get to the that. illegal part. Yeah. Yeah, that right. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what, if they came out and said, we're taking a real hard look at it, and, and we're talking about regulating it, and Bitcoin goes down, that is the buying opportunity of a century. Because that means it's not going to be banned. So that, to me, would be the greatest thing. I hope they say that tomorrow, and I'll be buying hand over fist. But Brian, it's Jim Labenthal. Real quick, is this thing even regulatable? I mean, this, this thing is, is dispersed. There's no central clearing agency for Bitcoin. So can it actually be regulated? It, it can be as regulated as much as the Internet can, right? I mean, the Internet is a distributed network. Bitcoin is a distributed network. So, listen, there are rules that govern these things. We have the SEC regulations on what a security is and what a commodity is, those type of things. Those exist already. So, you people who are investing in this, as we do, should play within those rules. Ultimately, this is a distributed global currency that is going to be very difficult for the regulators to get their arms around. Hey, John, it's uh, uh, Brian, it's Joe. John and I, the other evening at dinner, were discussing this. So, if, if the acceptance of 
this becomes mainstream. And, and John goes and purchases a vehicle. And that dealership accepts the Bitcoin and now tries to convert it to cash. Inherently, doesn't that create a tremendous amount of downside pressure on Bitcoin itself and almost self-destructs? No, not necessarily. Not any more than if you had Swiss francs and wanted to buy a uh, dealership in, uh, buy a car in Florida, you'd need to convert it to U.S. dollars and they'd need to convert it back. I mean, true, not if the market's big enough, but uh, that wouldn't affect it one whatever. That last point is the great one, Brian, because we're talking seven trillion uh, in currencies versus 160 billion in uh, cryptocurrencies. So, I mean, comparing one to the other, it's just a hot potato. If you pass it, as they're doing now with real estate, you pass seven million of this to somebody for a house somewhere, uh, and they hit the market with seven million Bitcoin, it makes an impact for the no. exact reason that the guys holding Bitcoin don't want to do that right now. No, actually, that's, that, that's, the, people don't understand how liquid Bitcoin is. I could buy or sell five million dollars of Bitcoin with a phone call. It's a very liquid market. It's as liquid as the GLD ETF, the gold ETF. And there are real buyers out there, and there are people actually using it for commerce. Many companies in Brazil are settling contracts with China in Bitcoin because it's much more efficient. BK, thanks so much for calling in. Uh, my pleasure. I can think of anybody better on this topic. Uh, and for those of you who watched the five, uh, Fast Money at Five, no, Brian is er or probably earlier than anybody, uh, at least that we can think of, in terms of focusing uh, and investing uh, in this certainly fast-growing and... Um, somewhat controversial vehicle. I mean, I can just tell by the reaction on the desk. Yeah, it's an asset. You, it's you not a currency. Regularly at five on Fast Money. It's an asset, Scott. It's not a currency. I'm, 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 always, I'm always right. But it doesn't have to be a currency to be successful. I'm, I'm always is, well, personally it's, taken it's, aback to hear somebody have such a strong opinion on something that they know absolutely nothing about, have never researched. They read like three articles and they say, oh, this is going to go away. Maybe it'll go away. But you know, and you're hitting our weed on that. Oh, well, first of all, no, no offense, but you're talking to somebody who's got ties to an authoritarian regime in a feudal country um, who enjoys control over the system in that country. You shouldn't be shocked that they don't love something that no government can control right now. Um, that actually should be exactly what you should expect. And it almost makes the bold argument for them to hear people in that position of authority to dislike it. Well, we, we put up the, the list of those famous faces and names certainly in the world of finance, and the prince is not at all alone, whether it's Marks, Diamond, Doug Lock, Larry, Bitcoin Bank, and many others it, who are not on that list. Bitcoin has blown up like seven times on the way from a dollar to $6,000. It's gone down 85% on four separate occasions. It's gone down 90% once, but it makes new highs after those crashes. So saying this is gonna blow up is not profound. It does that on a regular basis. If it is, in fact, the emergence of a new asset class being born, you should expect regular blow-ups because it's all speculative. Doesn't mean it's not going to outlive each and every blow-up along the way. Look, let, let, let me get, let me get the very quick. Go okay. Got it. Okay. But, but how much of this moving higher is people just buying it because it's momentum-based, it's going higher, and they don't understand the fundamentals? Most, and that's Most. not, and that's not, and, and it might work, and I don't know. Okay, so I'm not buying it. It's okay to say you don't know sometimes. But you don't go buy something just because it's going up. That's not the reason to buy it. No, that no one will admit that that's what they're doing, but a lot of people are doing exactly All right. that. All right, good stuff. Sorry. It's okay. We're going to buy Jason Dinner. I'll buy you dinner. We're going to buy Jason Dinner. Oh, absolutely. I'm not getting to your final point. All right, that's time, of course, just getting started right now. <laughs> I think we got a lot more ahead.